Hello GED students, Lisa emailed me this one at lightandsaltlearning at gmail.com. It is from the using the GED formula sheet lesson of the crash course. It's from the experience level practice and it is such great practice for the GED. Not only are problems like this GED typical, but they also review a ton of different skills from interpreting word problems to using formulas to um, using our algebra skills, all of which are big deals on the GED. So let's take a look. It says the area of a certain circle is about 42 square millimeters. What is the radius of the circle to the nearest tenth of a millimeter? So first of all, what are they looking for me to do or to find? Well, let's go take a look at that in the question. It says, what is the radius of the circle? They're asking me to find the radius of a circle. And then what do I know? Well, what I know here is I know the area of this certain circle. It says the area of the circle is about 42 square millimeters. As soon as I saw that, I was cheering because I don't have to know how to deal with area on the GED. I get the lovely formula sheet. So hitting up the GED formula sheet, you're gonna see something about uh, how the radius of a circle is related to the area. Let's take a look at that. So here's a little snippet from the top of the GED formula sheet, and you will get this when you test, all right? And the very first section of the formula sheet is area section, and you can see right down here on the bottom we have the area of a circle formula. So first step for us is just going to be to copy down that formula. Now, some students will make the mistake of just writing the right-hand side, pi r squared, but don't be that student because that would be a mistake here. Uh, important to write the entire formula, the left and the right-hand side, because uh, depending on what letter we're solving for, we're going to work this differently and we need both sides of the equation. Now that we have our formula here, we should plug in any known information. And what do we know? Well, we said already that we know the area. The area is 42 square millimeters. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to plug in the known value for area. Now careful, a lot of students only want to plug in on the right hand side of the formula, but this is the area. So it should replace the A for area. So I'm going to write it right underneath that A. Now obviously that equal sign is not going to change places here, but what is going to can also change is this pi. Pi is a known value and that's actually also on the formula sheet under the perimeter section. It tells you that pi is approximately, not exactly, but close enough. 3.14. So when you see pi in your word problems, feel free to just substitute in the value 3.14. Now, you might say, but I don't know r. And I say, well, that's the point. Of course you don't know r. That's what we're solving for. We're solving for the radius. And so in algebra, when we don't know something, uh, we use that letter. And so we still see that it's r squared there. And now, this is why I say this is also a test of your algebra skills. Now that we've plugged in our numbers, it's not a word problem anymore. It's not even really a geometry problem at this point. It's just straight up algebra. We have an equation. Take a look at this. This is an equation, and we're solving for r. Let's work to get that r alone so we can find out exactly what he's uh, equal to. Okay, remember when you're solving, when you're moving numbers from one side of the equal sign to the other, you actually work that order of operations, that gemma, backwards. So you should move anything that's adding or subtracting with the r first. Now, no, nothing here is adding or subtracting with the r. So next thing you should move is anything multiplying or dividing. See how that 3.14 is shoved against r? It is multiplying, so that's what I'm going to send packing first, and I am going to get rid of it by doing the opposite. The opposite of multiply is divide. Let's go ahead and divide around away that 3.14. You say, Kate, can I do that? And I say, you can do whatever you want to an equation, as long as you do it to both sides. You need to do it to both of the expressions to keep your balance. And now let's see what we get here. All right, so on the left-hand side, I'm gonna get an ugly number, that's okay. 42 divided by 3.14, it almost always gives me ugly numbers when circles get involved. I'm not gonna write down the whole thing, I did it in my calculator, uh, but I am going to just keep that long ugly number in my calculator because you don't wanna round until the end of the problem. So 42 divided by 3.14 is 13.37, yada, yada, yada. 
and that's going to be equal to, well, let's see what happens on the right-hand side. Multiplying by 3.14 and dividing by 3.14 are opposites. They'll cancel. So what am I left with? Well, this piece, the r squared. Now, a lot of students would stop right here. Careful, don't stop right here. R is not alone yet. We have to get rid of that square. And in fact, if we were doing that order of operations backwards, we see the next thing you move after multiplying and dividing is exponents. We got to get rid of that exponent. Now, um, in order to do that, you need to know the opposite of squaring. The opposite of squaring is square rooting. Let's square root the right hand side of my equation. You say, Kate, can I do that? And once again, I tell you, you could do whatever you want to an equation, literally whatever you want, as long as you do it to both sides. Let's take the square root of that left hand side. And now let's see what our new equation will be after making that change on both sides. Square and square root are opposites. They cancel ours alone, just like I wanted. And this is some calculator work to do. So how am I going to do this in the calculator? Well, um, the square root button is in green. You can see it. It looks like this uh, right above the X squared key. So anytime you want something in green, you have to press that green second button. So we're going to press second and then X squared. And then I'm actually going to have you use your big old arrow key, the one up at the top right, to arrow up to that unrounded number. I don't want a rounded number yet. Okay. So I'm going to arrow up once, twice. Oh no, just once I lied to that 13.37 yada, yada, yada. When that's highlighted in black, press enter and it'll type in the number for you. And then you can hit enter again and you should get 3.657 yada, yada, yada. And if you're really good at rounding and you are skipping this step and going straight to rounding in your head, that's fine. But I like to write it down for the students who get mixed up. Okay, so let's take a look at this problem. Do we have any rounding directions? Um, let's see. What is the radius of the circle to the nearest? Ooh, to the nearest. There's some rounding language. To the nearest tenth. Tenth is one decimal place. So let's go ahead and take a look. That's in my tenths place, so I cut off my number right after the tenths place, and I consider the next number the one I'm about to throw away. I ask myself, is this big enough to matter? Of course, if it's five or higher, it is, and so it's going to bump my number up. I'm going to say that's about 3.7 millimeters. Now, notice it's 3.7 millimeters, not square millimeters. Even though we started with area, this is just the radius. The radius is just a line. It's the line from the center to the outside of a circle. And lines are always measured in plain old linear measurements, like plain old millimeters or plain old inches. And so this is my final answer here, 3.7 millimeters. All right, look at all the skills we just did. Oh my gosh, we had to interpret this word problem. We had to use our lovely, um, we had to go hit up the GED formula sheet, which you should know how to use. Oh my gosh. We had to um, do this lovely skill of substitution from algebra and then solving for a variable. And that's again from algebra. We had to use our calculator skills, um, a little bit of tricky calculator skills and then rounding skills. I mean, goodness. This is what the GED likes, these kind of problems that just combine all these different skills. And so it is so important, guys, I can't stress it enough that you go practice this. So go check out the link in the video description. There's a link to my page of this on the crash course. So you can practice this over and over again because it is way easy to watch the math teacher do this. But it's a whole nother thing for you to put all five, six of these skills together in one place. And you do not want the first time you're trying to do this to be when you take your test. Do yourself a favor, go practice this skill. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.